21 hours. That's how much time passed between the moment when teenager Melissa Duran was snatched from right in front of the family home until the moment she was rescued. Police launched a massive search for her, but in the end, Melissa saved her own life by using things she learned on a TV show. All right, first we're going to talk about a kidnapped teenager who had the sense, the presence of mind, to leave clues for her rescuers. I'm here with 17-year-old Melissa Duran and former police detective Steve Cardian. Melissa, first out to you. Now, let's get through this story. I think people are going to be shocked when they hear it. You were in front of your family home. This was just now two weeks ago, I'm led to believe, or something like that, very recently. And tell us what happened. Um, basically, it was a normal day. Um, woke up, got ready for school. Um, I start school at 8, and I was ready by around 7 o'clock. And so I heard a doorbell, and um, I walked over to the door, and I saw a man standing there, and he wasn't, he didn't look suspicious, he didn't have a mask on or anything. Um, so I opened the door, and I noticed that he was standing really close to the doorway. And about three seconds later, he threw sand into my eyes. So that kind of just like, totally just blinded me and kind of caught me off guard. And then he just pulled me down from my neck and just started pulling me and dragging me. And then at that point, I thought um, we were getting robbed or something. And Melissa, Melissa, let me ask you, did, man, did other people witness this? I understand your little brother had to see this. Were there neighbors around? Well, who, who was, where were your yeah. folks? Um, well, my dad was at work, and my mom was upstairs getting the kids ready for school. Did she hear you screaming? Was she coming running downstairs? Or what, what, tell us, sort of set the scene for us. What, who, who saw this go down, and what'd they hear? Um, well, my mom and my little brother and my little sister heard everything, mm -hmm. um, and they ran downstairs, but one of the guys um, ran into the house with his hand behind his back, like as if he had a gun or some kind of weapon, and said not to come any closer and not to call the cops or they were gonna kill me. So um, after he ran out, my mom tried to go run after me, but that's when the car had already like drove away. And so now you hear you're abducted, you're, the, the, the worst thing that's ha possible has happened, Stephen. She's gotten into the car, right? And what I understand is the first order of business, don't get in the car. Yeah, your, your primary concern, yeah. Dr. Drew, is that you don't want to be taken from what we call the primary to the secondary crime scene to their A point A to point B because it's unforgiving. So, so the first thing for us to learn about this is the take home for the people at home, for any of us with kids who think to ourselves, this couldn't happen to me. Right. That's silly to think that way. That's how I think, Steve. I, this, I think my kid become a drug addict before I think he's going to be abducted. And the reality is they could probably become abducted uh, just as likely as any other awful thing happens. They, they could fight, kick, scream. If he tells you not to yell, yell. If he tells you not to run, run. If he tells you to n not to fight, fight. You do everything opposite, ruin his plan. He's relying on a compliant fear factor that you will comply with his wishes through fear. That's not the usual 17-year-old to have those kinds of prescient thoughts. No, I better she, leave my she's... sandals behind. I'm going to drop a bracelet here. And, and I, I think she even used her phone. She even tried. They were, they were able to track her phone ultimately, right? Her, her phone was on and a phone call was received on her phone. And that's when the, her abductors took her phone away from her. But very composed. Uh, she's a brave young lady. Uh, she, she did everything possibly that she could have done right. And what happened in the rescue, Melissa? What, how'd they finally find you? What happened? Um... I'd say it was about like one in the morning and I heard um, the cops outside, they put their speaker on and they were just like, Henderson police, we have a warrant, we know you're in there, come out. Um, and they were just doing that for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then for what seemed like a long time, it was just silence. I didn't hear any movements in the apartments or anything outside. And then finally I heard a big boom at the door and it was SWAT and they were just yelling, SWAT, Melissa, Melissa. And then they broke into the bedroom where I was at and they just, there was about seven of them and they came and they just picked me up, asked me if I was all right and got me out of there as soon as possible. It's uh, remarkable. An amazing story. What, it, it, what do we take it, away? What do parents take away? What well. Should... It, it, it usually doesn't end like this, Dr. Drew. Uh, be diligent. Your home is your castle. Uh, we have, all have the good gift of intuition. We need to listen to that and act upon it. Uh, most often we don't. Uh, there's a lot of measures that we can take. Uh, securing your home, uh, not answering the door, even if they say that they know your parent. Uh, have a blueprint of something to do in the event of anything happens bad. 
something that you can go to. And, I mean, this is like, literally, if, if somebody put this in a script in a film, it would be, they'd, they'd say, tone it down a little bit, it's too over the top. She'd yeah. Say, no, this couldn't happen in reality. The other thing I'm taking away from this, again, as I'm contemplating not my family, not my kid, as being a, a foolish way to think about things, phones, which we worry kids are doing too much stuff on and you know, spending their time in social media and fooling around with games, Phones could have been what ultimately saved her life. Maybe phones are not such a reliability after all. No, phones are, in today's day and age, we leave an electronic footprint everywhere we go. Fortunately, her abductors used a phone that law enforcement was able to track. And that was one of the critical uh, elements that saved so her. So use your phone if you get into trouble? Like call anybody? Uh, call Use your phone. Make sure you have your GPS on. Make sure you have your, your local police department and 911 dialed in automatically. All right, I'm going to get, Steve's going to stay, I'm going to get to calls, and later on I've got a father who attacked the guy who sold his kids bath salts. No Let's go to Debbie in Colorado. Debbie? Hi, uh, thanks, Dr. Drew. Debbie. I think the expert, I think it's Dr. Cardian. I'm sorry if I don't get his name right. He's absolutely right. I definitely think that women should fight back. Chances are the guy is going to kill you. Um, whether you're a younger, beautiful woman or older woman, you have to fight back. And to Ms. Duran, God bless you. You are resilient, especially for your age. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're discussing an abduction. Melissa Duran was taken right from her home and had the presence of mind, there she is, to leave a trail of evidence, not evidence, of uh, what would you call it? Uh, uh, it's not evidence. Evidence, clues, she was leaving clues, a trail of clues. 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 Yes. Trail of clues, exactly. And we'll show a picture of Melissa again. Bel Melissa is only 17 years old. And Melissa, we're going to talk about things that other kids and families can do to protect their children. But just first, uh, just a tip of the hat to you, my dear. Just amazing how you had that presence of mind, how well put together you seem today. And uh, just thank you for sharing your story with us. It's just remarkable. No problem. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, Steve, what are the technological things available right now for us that we can take home today or try to reach out for and get today to protect our own kids? You know, we have a number of things, but before I go any further, I have to say to Melissa, I'm a father. I'm a 30-year law enforcement veteran. I've lectured to thousands upon thousands of people your age group. Uh, you're amazing. You did everything correct. Your composure, the way you tell the story, it's absolutely beautiful. We have... We have a number of Thank things you. that we, we can use to, to keep one safe. Uh, in, in Melissa's case, it was someone that worked for her father. So have online security background checks are an amazing thing to do. Uh, have a plan if someone comes into your so, house. So, or, well, stop, I'll make sure we hear that. So if you're gonna have an employee, Yes. Check them out, bottom yeah. line. Yeah, Intellius, yeah. there's many of the online okay, so services. Check them out. Got that. Yeah, Number two. check them out. Make sure you know about their background. It, it, it puts you on notice. Uh, security cameras are great. A safe room in your home. Signal, somebody's trying to break in your home. Signal, run upstairs. We'll have a, a barricaded door. They call it a J-bar. It prevents the door from opening. Uh, How about for teens themselves? Are there things that they can do, like in their social media context or with their cell phones? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. For, as a teen, they're, what do we see for women of this age? They're a little bit too young, a little bit too trusting, and they haven't yet developed the skills to deal with the predator. So have a plan. Think about everything that could go wrong in your life and develop a blueprint for it, something to go to. When the, the bad stuff happens, that's not a time to create a plan. I remember my daughter did one of those uh, self-defense classes and felt very empowered by that. I don't think she would have been as much of a buzzsaw where she attacked if she hadn't had the experience of actually practicing that. You're saying your daughters too? Yeah, my I have three daughters. Um, they in school. They yes, had it was in school. Class, they all, they've all done and they've it. They've all done it, and they they, they were a little wigged out by it. Yeah. But the great thing is that in the moment of being panicked, you can't implement a plan. No, let alone think about it. You might freeze. Yes. That's what a fear response okay. is to freeze. It's an important thing to point out. If you have, a, a, but people are, who've had previous trauma that's are right. prone to freeze. Well, and freeze that's is why exactly the wrong thing to exactly, do in these situations. Exactly. In a class, they teach you over and over again, so it becomes a little rote. So when something happens, you're less likely to have the freeze response and more likely to do something. Any cell phone location services or anything that Facebook or Twitter or anything we can well, do for us? You know, there, there's a company out there that makes a variety of different uh, GPS dev tracking devices mm -hmm. that, that go into their backpack, into, into their watches, even into their sneakers. And I envision uh, 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 10 years from now, we may have a device that you could actually implant into your child. Should we be tracking our kids like that? You're, you're cringing, but should we? What's your advice? Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a violation in a way, but it's a safety factor. Should we? I don't think so. Okay. What, let's suppose I say yes. If I say yes, or let's put it this way. What is the level of denial that I'm maintaining if I say, oh, no, I can never do that. It's getting intrusive. Is, is there a certain you know amount of denial here that I, I don't even acknowledge this could happen to my kids? Here I am a psychiatrist, but yes. I'm going to tell you, 
that a certain amount of denial is good. If we walked around every day, all day, thinking about how we could be kidnapped and raped and mugged and terrorizing our families and so on, uh, we'd be incapacitated. Uh, many people have anxiety disorders, or even not a disorder, but are anxious. And you can really ruin the functioning of your life if you're thinking like this every second. So you have to find that gray zone where you educate, you prepare, and then you step back and say, you know, this is unlikely to happen. I mean, we're listening to the story tonight because it's amazing and rare. And the point is these things really are rare overall. So prepare, educate, and then I say use some denial or you cannot function in your life. It's so funny. I'm flipping back and forth my own head between my anxiety disorder and my <laughs> denial because I'm wondering if I'm using my anxiety, to, I mean, my denial to protect my anxiety and then my judgment is up. I get your point. I get it. That certain amount of... Um, yeah, we have to believe that we're basically that we're okay we in the world. We have to feel safe. But, we, but Steve would say, don't be silly. Make, take right. extra action. Take extra yeah. actions. Less than one half of one percent of uh, are your stereotypical uh, Polly Klaus, Jessica Lungford uh, abductions. Uh, again, a rare case. Most of people you know. Hero. Yes. Most yes, people Yes, sir. Know. Okay, guys. Thank you for this conversation.